the pace of life grows busier, louder, and more insistent, we gather here to a quiet, holy spot where our hearts find rest as we stop to contemplate and meditate and hope. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, goodwill to men. Can you imagine what life would be like if all people lived according to the blessing of the angels? If we all were to glorify God in everything we do, work together to ensure peace on earth, and always share goodwill with our fellow man. Ark of Herald Angels sing, Glory to the newborn King. prophet's candle of hope and, the, and light the candle of peace, the angel's candle of peace. As we light this candle, we acknowledge that only our long-awaited Messiah can provide a peace that passes human understanding and gives our hearts rest. Take time this week to seek out that peace the angels wished for us so long ago. Almighty God, thank, thank you, you for, for the blessing of the angels. May, May we hold your, your peace in our hearts as a rock. rock upon which we can anchor our lives and find sure footing in the midst of life's storms. You came to bring peace to all people, Jew and Gentile alike. Help us work to find peace, even with those who seem different than us. Keep us mindful of others and make us brave to share your peace with the world that so desperately needs it. Amen. Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. be with you and also with you let us pray merciful God who sent your messengers the prophets to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ our Redeemer who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. 
The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 72 responsively by half verse. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously, and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people, and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure. From one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field. Like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel. Who alone does wondrous thee. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor 
and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ is coming. May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So today in Matthew's Gospel, we're introduced to John the Baptist, that very odd fellow in the wilderness preaching about repentance. And in doing so, Matthew is orienting us to the story to come. And it's a story about repair. Confession and repentance loom large in John the Baptist's prophetic language. John knows that no one can repair things without first conducting a thorough exploration of what's wrong. And John insists on truth-telling. So, you know, are you squirming about this gospel passage yet? How is this all good news, this portrait of a Jesus who judges, sorts, and burns us? Do we squirm because we misconstrue the meaning of judgment? I tend to equate judgment with condemnation, but in fact, to judge something is simply to see it clearly, to know it as it truly is. Synonyms for judgment include discernment, acuity, sharpness, and perception. In other words, a thorough exploration of what is. So what if John is saying that the Messiah who is coming really sees us, that he knows us at our very core? Maybe the winnowing fork is an instrument of deep love, patiently wielded by the one who discerns in us rich harvests that are still hidden by chaff. Maybe it's in offering God every particular of our lives that we give him permission to clear us, to separate all that's destructive from all that is good and beautiful and worthy in us. Richard Rohr writes, all of creation has a cruciform pattern of loss and renewal, death and resurrection, letting go and becoming more. It is a coincidence of opposites, a collision of cross-purpose waiting for the resolution in us. We are all filled with contradictions needing to be reconciled. The price we pay for holding together these opposites is always some form of crucifixion. Jesus himself was crucified between a good thief and a bad thief, hanging between heaven and earth holding on to his humanity and his divinity, a male body with a female soul. Yet he rejected neither side of these forces, but suffered them all and reconciled all things in himself. So Richard War packs a lot of meaning in a few sentences. Repentance is also a word that we tend to misconstrue. The heart of the word repentance means turning around, starting over, taking another direction, or choosing another course. All of those actions by their nature call into question the value or rightness of one's current behavior. But the emphasis is less on what is wrong with what we're doing now and on what is right and important and necessary about what we will do differently. Repentance also underscores that change isn't necessary for change's sake, but rather that change is necessary because we've become aware that our actions are out of step with God's deep desire for peace and equity for all God's people. 
and taking Isaiah's vivid imagery seriously for the whole of creation. Repentance is realizing that God is pointing you one way, you've been traveling another way, and then changing course. So this morning, you're invited to take a moment to daydream what God's vision might be for you. What do you think God wants you to be and to do? God invites us to dream something beyond what we can presently see. And in some ways, that's exactly what the Isaiah passage this morning says. God's dream about a different world where there is no predator or prey, no fear or hatred. It's not a goal to be achieved, but a dream by which we set a course. And now, choose one, just one element of your life of which you would like to repent. In other words, change direction. And name this Advent as a time to do it. Is there an unhealthy relationship you want to repair or address? Can you imagine using your time differently and toward better ends? Is there some practice or habit you might take up that would produce more abundant life for you or for those around you? The point of Advent is to make room for Christ's arrival, to be surprised again that God was willing to enter into our lives and history and take on our vulnerability in order to give us hope. We often think, again, that God isn't supposed to do that. We think that God is supposed to sit up in heaven, alternatively smiling or frowning down on us depending on our behavior. But the God we know doesn't do that. The God we know in Jesus comes down out of heaven to take on our lot and our life and give us hope by being with us and for us, inviting us into a more abundant life and helping us to see in the face of our neighbor not a competitor for scarce resources, but a brother or sister in Christ. Which means we can imagine that it doesn't have to be this way, whatever this way is that is oppressing us right now. We can take action and step toward God's dream for our lives and our communities. Author and psychologist Wayne Dyer often says, change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. Remember that repentance is realizing that God is pointing you one way, that you've been traveling another way, and then changing course. Each time we hold up our usual or acquired habits and practices and compare them with our deepest hopes and dreams, we experience the joy of Advent repentance, a time still marked by our preparation to receive and share the grace and glory of God, represented in the babe of Bethlehem, the Word made flesh, our Emmanuel. Bear fruit worthy of repentance. We thank you, God of love and justice, that you are forever working within us and among us, in our hearts and in our world, to create wholeness and freedom, compassion and connection, equity and reconciliation. Help us to see in a different way. Open our eyes, come into our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Amen. Standing as you are able, let us recite an affirmation of our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will will come come again again in glory to judge the the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prophet John the Baptist preached a repentance which would bear fruit in the lives of those who heard him. In penitence and faith, let us offer to God our prayer for all people, saying, In the name of Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world and for all those ordained to particular ministries for the building up for the body of Christ, that in our diverse vocations we may serve to the glory of God. In the name of Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for this nation and for all the nations of the world, remembering especially those who are victims of political or social injustice. We pray for political leaders everywhere, that they may administer the tasks of government with courage and equity. In the name of Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the elderly, and those who live alone, especially for those listed that are near to our hearts and those we name now silently or out loud. And we pray for those who are overworked and for those who cannot find work. Send upon them the power of the Holy Spirit that they may abound in hope. In the name of Christ, hear hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who protect and serve as well as their families, the police, the firefighters, (coughs) emergency medical personnel, and those serving in the military, especially those listed who are near to our hearts and those we name silently or out loud. In the name of Christ, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For those in our parish family celebrating birthdays this week, Sam Hawk, Ann Furlong, and Bella Baynard, in the name of Christ, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for this community, for our neighbors and friends, for those with whom we study and work. Guide and strengthen us in all our common life, that we may know the gifts of your grace and love. In the name of Christ, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who will die this day, and for the beloved dead whom we have entrusted to you, especially for Maitland L. Harvey, for whom the altar flowers are given, that you will be present to him, speaking your name in comfort and power. In the name of Christ, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers to you, our God, in penitence for what is past, and in faith that your work in us will bear fruit as we seek to do your will. For you alone are the Holy One. May our lives give honor to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also also with you. you. That's peace. be with you.
Jeez. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Which at any moment yes. can turn into. Yes. So he's going. A friend of mine this here, week here. said she had a to, sore throat okay. on Tuesday. I, I know I asked you, I know you told me that Wednesday I, I she was all stuffed up, and she decided to test. And yeah, it was God's peace. Peace, Barbara. God's peace. God's peace. Peace, Dana. Peace. I'm praying for you. Peace, Betty Jones. <laughs> you again. Up there with your white robe. Yeah. We gotta talk about the book. Yeah. I ordered it. I, so we're doing, because I did too. Okay. Peace. Peace. Oh, I love and thank you. But I'll see you next week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peace, Max. Oh, I'm great. <laughs> you need to elevate me to Archbishop. <laughs> okay, whatever you say. <laughs> You're the boss. <laughs> Peace. I worry. Good. Yeah. Peace. Peace be with you. How you doing? Oh, very well, thank you. Oh, good. Good, good. Good to hear. We went out to dinner last night and it just felt good. Iron Hill. Okay, thank you. <laughs> My Lord, what a morning. <laughs> Are there announcements before? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that can go back. Yeah, so, yeah. so the live stream can hear 26. you. I just want to thank everyone that brought the gifts for the, um, the children of incarcerated parents. But if you have one, can you please bring it by next Sunday? And thank you for blessing these children. Amen. Thank Amen. you. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. This coming Saturday is breakfast for Santa. I didn't have time this week. Two weeks ago, I asked everybody that could volunteer to see me. I have so far four guaranteed volunteers. I need more. If we end up with just four or five, we'll be very slow to respond, but we'll carry it on anyway. Um, so if you can volunteer, just show up. Um, eight, no later than eight o'clock on Saturday morning. Otherwise, please invite your neighbors and your neighbor's kids and your family to Breakfast with Santa. It's the best around, I'm telling you. Um, so we look for a good turnout, and uh, it's a great way to share with the community. And if you've never experienced this before, you're in for a treat to see the smile on the kids' faces. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> speaking of volunteers, uh, as everyone, I think, knows by now, um, our deacon, Joan, will be leaving us 
uh, as of uh, Christmas. Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. And um, so Vestry uh, would like to uh, present a, a little special coffee hour um, in honor of Joan and her service here uh, on the 18th, which is two days from two days. Hello. <laughs> Earth to Vic. Two weeks from today. Uh, it's going to be a little special coffee hour, a little more than, than normal. And I would ask any vestry members or non-vestry members who would like to help us set up the day before, Saturday the 17th, and I have to check to see if we have a rental. Um, please let me know or let the office know, and, and we'll talk about the details. So any help would, uh, as Pat mentioned, will be appreciated because we want to have it all set up for Sunday morning. Okay, thank you. You heard that, didn't I'll, you? I'll roll into you. Okay, good, thank you. <laughs> um, Liz Hultz uh, asked me to announce something this morning. Liz, as you may or may not know, is our community engagement coordinator. Am I mm -hmm. right? Thank you. Uh, without going into the details, she has been getting involved with a lot of events and so forth in the community and, and touching, reaching out to a lot of uh, people. Um, and uh, one of the events that she has presented to uh, Vestry was uh, gifting for some of the senior citizens next door in Coatesville Towers. Uh, Vestry thought it was a good idea. So what we are asking is 12, <laughs> got it right, didn't take my shoes off either, 12 um, gift bags, uh, which will be all the same, uh, and they are to include uh, fuzzy socks, unisex hats, you know, the pullover thing, the wool things, and or gloves, uh, crossword or word, word search puzzle books, uh, and a small food item, non-perishable, obviously. And then put, put it all into a nice gift bag. We need 12. I'm going to do one. Um, and I guess the first 11 who would uh, like to step up, uh, let me know or let Liz know or let the office know. And we have to have them loaded and back to Trinity here on that same Sunday, the 18th. Busy day. Okay. So please let us know. I think it's a great idea to, uh, to reach out to our neighbors next door and to share a little bit of, uh, of uh, the Christmas joy uh, with them. Okay. A lot of them have nothing. So thank you. I think I'm done. I thought of an additional item. You did? Yeah. Um, since everybody goes to Rite Aid from uh, the towers, uh, a little gift card to Rite Aid. That's a possibility. Yeah. So. It's a possibility. I agree. If anybody wants to do that, that's fine. These were the items that were suggested by, I don't know, if the person's name next door. Yeah, the. Um, or her position. She's I forget the name of her position. Sort. Yeah. yeah. For, Recreation. Yeah, it sounds good. Like but are the are the bags to be identical? Yeah, they're not gonna match. That's what that's what she had suggested. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. So that would, okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we do want to keep them uniform because we don't want one person getting something another didn't. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hi and good morning. Good morning. Wait a minute, hold on. Okay. Um, my name is Betty Sullivan, and I've been a member of Trinity since around 2015 when we moved from North Carolina to Downingtown. Well, my story about Trinity is as follows looking for Sunday worship and feeling the fit. And coming to the Episcopal Church of the Trinity here in Coatesville was a perfect fit. The Eucharist, the communion, the forgiveness of sin, the common prayers, the invitations and fellowships made by the Trinity family, and the thought-provoking homilies and the Christ-centered spiritual direction this parish gives us every week. The past two previous years have presented us with enormous challenges, but God has blessed us with a generous heart and enormous spirit. Our church has remained faithful to the message of Jesus. We are an all-accepting, mindful, non-judgmental, all-inclusive, 
crowd of traditions and heritage, both secular and Christian. While God expresses true love perfectly, we are invited to join and share in it, and this we do through our ministries and reimagined programs. We imagined, well, as the need arised, we needed to live stream our church service, our vestry meetings, our healing services, and other church provisions. And they remained uninterrupted, and it kept us connected with one another. Ministries such as the Veteran Brunch, Angel Tree, the Seniors a Gift Giving, the Coffee Hour, the Laundry Love, the Healing Service, Undy Sundays, Memorial Flowers, Sunday Child Care, Youth Sunday, Anti-Racism, Book Club, Free Transportation to and from, and the Thistle Hills, helping women who are survivors of prostitution trafficking. And of course, our pledges support our house, this wonderful 15th century Gothic-style church. And like many homes, it needs up care and keep. From the air that we breathe to heat, to air conditioning, from a leaking roof to a place we we share fellowship and a coffee hour. From every now and then a good scrubbing to putting out the wheelie bins. Volunteerism and monetary aid, well, that allows us to continue our community outreach and in the church service programs. No matter where you live or how frequently or infrequently you attend this church service, many may find the place right here to settle in and pray in unity and worship in Christ's name. So our church, with our grateful heart and and appreciation, we thank you for your generous and continued contributions. The pledges you make make a real difference in the lives of those who need them the most. So you can give this holiday season. Please do, and we thank you and this coffee hour and coffee after. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Are there other announcements before I go? Great, I just have a few. This, um, This Thursday, there is no healing service. There is a Brandywine Deanery clergy meeting on Thursday, so there's no healing service. Uh, We have Christmas caroling in downtown Coatesville happening this afternoon. Um, I've participated for quite a few years. It's actually kind of fun. So we meet at 145 in front of the Steps of Trinity, and uh, you're provided with the music. Um, It's good, good people, and we just travel, walk around downtown Coatesville singing Christmas carols. It's fun. Join us. Uh, Let's see. Christmas Eve candlelight service is at 8 p.m. this year, so Saturday, December 24th, 8 p.m., Christmas Eve candlelight service. And also I want to share that Ruth Gardner, Cliff Gardner's wife, passed away on Wednesday. Her funeral service is scheduled here at Trinity for Thursday, December 22nd. I think it's 9 to 10 is visitation, and 10 o'clock is the service here at Trinity for Ruth. And today, if you can turn in your Christmas memorial flower requests today so we know how many flowers to order, that would be wonderful. The form is back where you pick up your bulletin or in the church office. You can put it in the offering plate, email it, call it in, however you want to get the word in. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, O holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. And on the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons. That was Cyril, our patron saint and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we sing.
Alleluia. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
service continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.